Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokish. I'm here with Josh Sigurdsson of World Alternative Media. And I, the, the coolest thing that, that I take the most pride in in my own work is being an activist activist and, and helping other people and lifting other people up. And of all the people who I can say, I can't say I brought you into the movement, but I can say I was helpful in welcoming and getting them going and, and, and encouraging and, and, and helping out with some of the, the independent media stuff. And I'm, I'm very proud to see that he is really develop that you know I love that that the wisdom that I and, and help that I've been able to to give you has been put to maximum advantage and so Josh interviewed me when I was in jail uh, live from Wise County Correctional Facility and he's been doing just amazing work over the last few years building his brand but I, I just found out today that he's got kind of a pet interest subject that not many people in this realm are into that he doesn't usually get to talk about so josh is it aliens i cannot <laughs> say if it's aliens but it is certainly strange and i will go into that for you adam because so that's the worst setup i could have given you for this but we'll start with the story of how you got onto this topic yeah so um a few weeks back i was feeling really sick and i Historically, I've loved engineering. I've loved architecture. I went to college for architecture. You know, I don't usually brag about going to a public indoctrination camp, but if I'm going to brag about it, it was an interesting class. So with that said, I learned a lot about architecture there. And in recent weeks, I was very sick. I was in bed. And, you know, I finally got a chance to watch some YouTube videos. Us in U on YouTube, we don't really get the chance as much to watch the videos as we are just constantly making them. Uh, so it, it was something that I took some pride the struggle is real. I make more videos than I watch. It's, yeah, it's, it sucks. I wish I could be a consumer sometimes and just enjoy it. But it's really cool you had that opportunity and, and got into something here. Yeah, absolutely. And it was nice. So, you know, I'm... I'm binge watching YouTube videos, which is like the kind of thing I used to do with yourself and many others in this movement was early on just get inspired by stuff. And of course, I've been trying to inspire since and looking into a whole bunch of strange videos on YouTube, I bumped into a few channels that kind of made me question the history of humanity, actually, which was something that, you know, I never really took a second thought for. You know, we all think about what are the origins of humanity, but one of the things I saw was involving, you know, the ancient pyramids of Giza and Machu Picchu, Peru, and all these things that people like Graham Hancock, uh, you know, Brian Forrester and several other big names uh, talk about. And one of the things that really caught my eye was the Sphinx of Egypt. Well, this is this amazing symbolic, you know, statue, I guess you could call it, uh, monolith that people have been looking at for thousands of years. And... Uh, for years, for many hundreds of years, it's been considered to be about 4,500 years old. Never any proof of that, um, but they assumed it, so it must be real. And that kind of led me down this rabbit hole where they have, they, they reported on how there's, you know, water erosion around the Sphinx. Now, if you study that area of land, you have to go back about 12,000 to 12,500 years to find a time where there was water flowing through the Sahara when it was a jungle. So the idea of it having water erosion made absolutely no sense to me. So I kept looking into it. I'm looking at how, you know, no one's allowed to look into the underground chambers under the Sphinx, even though they found them. Uh, the government in Egypt won't let anyone, you know, truly excavate or look into the pyramids. And it started getting me thinking, you know, there's a lot of significance about uh, pyramids in, I guess you could say, government. Uh, when you look at, you know... It's on the dollar. It's on the dollar. And I've... You know, it's the eye of Horus, you know, the whole idea that Horus was, of course, a pharaoh in Egypt uh, long, long ago, son of Osiris, whose tomb is between the Sphinx and the pyramids. And in this tomb, which I don't think they've really opened in like 20 years or so, you go down three layers, like m many hundreds of meters underground, and you find a moat with water and obelisks in it and this huge tomb. And it was on an NBC special that I actually saw this from like 1996 or something. And I just started getting thinking, they saw tunnels in the video, but uh, the guy who was in charge, Zahi Hawass, who was the head of the antiquities department in Egypt, said, oh, there's nothing down there. Don't, don't even look over there. And it gets me thinking how significant is the cover-up or could a cover-up be that there could have been 
some kind of ancient society. Brian Forrester does great books talking about how the pyramids could have been used as power plants at the time. So you look around us today and we see lights and we see metal and we see cars and think 12,000 years down the line, none of that will exist but the stone structures we create will. And it made me think, you know, such precision cutting, such, I, I'm not saying aliens, again, <laughs> I'm not saying aliens, because I have n absolutely no evidence of that, but <laughs> just- There's a lot of evidence, uh, uh, yeah. maybe not proof, but there, no, and, and I said that to, to make fun of the subject, because a lot of people who bring the fantasy, conspiracy-minded attitude to this go, well, I can't figure it out, but therefore it must be aliens, and that's a real intellectual cop-out, but, the approach you're taking obviously is, is a little different and and looking at from from the perspective of gee who has who has an interest in keeping these stories yeah. secret well what i found interesting is that you know they often say that the pyramids of egypt were built as tombs and it's just absurd to think about you know lifting these several like hundred ton blocks and just piling them up for who knows how long they said it took 60 years or something the idea of building that whole thing for to put a dead body in no, they have a thing called the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. You know, there's crazy amounts of tombs. That's where most of the pharaohs went. Uh, I don't think that they buried them in the in the in these tombs in the pyramid. So you go inside the pyramid. It's almost like one millionth of an inch uh, precision in these rooms, and unbelievably just built uh, better than anything we build today. And then there's like this dumpy old, uh, you know, thing that looks like a bathtub made out of stone that's like badly carved. And apparently there's a dead body in there at some point and, you know, that was the tomb. And that was their basically entire proof, their, all their evidence that that is what the pyramids were built for. And they recently found, you know, some kind of inert gases or liquid in another part of the Great Pyramid of Giza that they refuse to look into. The government says, oh yeah, we know about that, but it's, it's nothing. Well, you've never looked have you no it, it, there's something there and obviously it's significant it's not you know another tomb or whatever you want to call it it's an inert gas or a, a liquid why why would that be almost at the top of the pyramid so i know this is a very strange conversation adam but i, no, no, <laughs> it's, no, I, mean, I i'm not saying it's government but it's government, it's government. yes absolutely so i mean there's all these excavations and it brings me to my point which is I believe there could have been an ancient civilization that was much more transformed than anything we thought of 4,500 years ago. I'm thinking 12,500 years ago and something happened to wipe them out. Now, this isn't uh, as much of a conspiracy theory as it is, uh, you know, an interest in the origins of humanity. Well, it's a history theory where there are distinct gaps in our knowledge. And, and what's surprising to me hearing you talk about this is that it's not just... Well, we looked into it and we don't know and the best minds of our time haven't figured it out and you know They're working on it and maybe we'll get better answers eventually because if they could say that convincing like is that, that That's what I grew up with as an understanding as a kid, right? I think that's that's kind of what we all Get from well the government officially sanctioned historical societies and excavations and permission to da 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 da, -da. But what you're saying is that there is a, a distinct trend of suppression of research in a lot of areas regarding ancient civilizations and their technologies and obviously in their architecture that's actually being suppressed by government. Yeah, if you look around the pyramids, there's a lot of tunnels that are just perfectly built. There's no reason for them. Uh, some of them are too small. No known reason. No known reason for them. Currently known reason. Yeah, you can't go through these tunnels. They're way too small for humans to fit through, but they go just meters and meters and meters, hundreds of meters, and it's just, absurd to think that you know well maybe people were super small back then i don't know just like jump to crazy conclusions and nearby the pyramids of giza we have uh other pyramids that were huge inside in size that exploded now they have black char on them like they've been burnt now please tell me you know back 12,000 something years ago what could have hit a massive pyramid and exploded it outward, causing a bunch of burn on the stone. And then very close by, we find what looks like it could have been the beginning of a pyramid that they were building. Massive rocks going down, uh, you know, I, I believe a few hundred feet. And these rocks came from a quarry so far away and they're just, it, no crane to this day can carry it. There's no counterweight that you can use to actually bring this from point A to point B. The idea that, you know, they put it on logs and pulled it by rope, 
just can you imagine being behind this thing pushing hundreds and hundreds of tons and being like oh we're kind of going uphill now i hope this doesn't fall back on me you need i think a, what one guy mentioned was an equivalent of uh, 800 um uh, bulls to pull this rock so okay let me get this straight so they get 800 bulls, like it's hard to round up like two horses, but let's get 800 bulls, tie them all together because they love being tied together, <laughs> hook them up to this giant rock and hopefully it works, but you'll probably need a few more because it goes uphill. It's just this kind of and, stuff. And we're going to do this hundreds of times. Hundreds and hundreds of times. And then recently this, what looked like they were building a new pyramid, they used it as a garbage dump. The, the Egyptian government put all this garbage uh, from Cairo into it and then buried it with sand. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I want to turn away just for a second from the what happened, how did it happen, but to who's covering it up and why. And if it's today's governments that say, we don't want you to know the real story of this history, I don't think the suppression of technology itself is enough because they would want that technology for themselves. We would see them using it. We would see some new company that has a monopoly on giant stone manipulation, right? Because there's there's probably a market demand for that. Someone would want that. I mean, if only, you know, an egomaniacal American president who just wants, you know, thinks the Washington Monument isn't big enough. But there's in in in, in our realm of of socio political analysis, are are they hiding? just the stories of rebellion and humanity seeking freedom in the past that that have been suppressed that are necessary to keep people suppressed today like it, it, it seems like that's that that's the direct connection it's not that they had this technology or that they had this industrial capacity it's that maybe there was a maybe 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 those theories those explanations about how they built the pyramids based on massive human efforts and millions of slaves maybe Maybe that's possible. And maybe that is the story. And what they're suppressing is how that phase of human slavery came to an end because they don't want us to see that this is part of our heritage of humanity because the, st the statists, the governments, the controllers, they want to write human history as government to government to government to government to government. Mm -hmm. And the true story of human history, I mean, even, even if you just do a little digging, yeah. you know, like, you know, Howard Zinn's work, you go right away, <laughs> that's, 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 not, that's not what happened. We didn't just go from government to government. No, sorry, people. You can't. So in, in regards to the stuff that you're talking about, specifically in Egyptology, where, what's the motivation? What are, what are they really hiding? Is it something like that? Well, I mean, looking back at, uh, I think it's the 1940s, uh, the United States uh, military got their first major stealth fighter and no one knew about it until I believe the late 90s, early 2000s, around that period when it came out. You, you can imagine what they have now that no one knows about. You know, all these years down the line, maybe in 2080 something, we'll find out about certain incredible technologies that the military had in 2018. So you're saying that the suppression of, of all of this might just be, hey, they might discover, we, we might discover some important technology. We want to make sure that we control it and we own it and it's, it's just aligned with kind of DARPA shenanigans. Well, yeah, I mean, the city of Cairo, the government has allowed them to build on top of all these ancient ru ruins. And my whole issue is that it's like, is, was there an ancient calamity? Was there an ancient civilization? Could we learn from that? Could it have been destroyed by, I don't know, government, war, destruction, these explosions that we see that take like a nuclear bomb to blow up one of these major pyramids? Could it just be, you know, um, an asteroid that came and smashed into it and killed off, you know, most of humanity? The point is, I mean, Zahi Hawass, who's head of the, uh, who was head of the antiquities department in Egypt, was pretty open about how he said, I don't believe in radar technology. Uh, but meanwhile, you know, he's finding all these excavations with radar, but people find stuff underneath the Sphinx, and it's like, no, no, that uh, radar, what is that? You know, it's, that's terrible technology. I like to use chisels and like whatever the hell he uses. So with that said, I mean, I, I think that they might have discovered something that uh, could have actually helped them create a bigger arsenal or something. They could have found I, that's a question that is why i want to know because there are there's obviously a, a push to suppress the information and when there's a push to suppress information i want to know about it i even kind of want to just go there myself and and find out but i mean the cia or isis or whatever you want to call it is kind of headquartered in cairo so it's kind of scary to go there but i mean with that said uh 
you know, when you see something that doesn't make sense, it's part of the human mind to acknowledge it, try and understand it, and try and, and try and come to a conclusion. And when it's impossible to come to a conclusion because governments are saying you cannot look into this, then that's what makes me want to look into it more. When government tells me not to do something, I want to do it more. And that's, that's the way I look at this. So, like, again, it's a strange topic, but it's something that could be so important to the history of humanity. So when it comes to the stealth fighter, could they have technology that the Egyptians had? Why did these people all get, uh, die off? What happened to them? And why is it illegal to excavate this stuff without government permission and government oversight and only in specific locations because if you look in the wrong place, then that's illegal. You'll get banned from Egypt or potentially several years in prison. Why is that? Well, Josh, thanks for sharing an uh, off-the-beaten-path kind of topic with us. And hopefully, this can be an area that you're going to pursue, and we're going to hear more coming out about this. And I know, even if not from Josh, just that we're living in this age of Internet accountability, it's getting really hard to suppress these kinds of important truths. So thanks again, Josh. Thank you. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the Internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.